Hamas and most other Muslim terrorist organizations. So what is Rick Warren doing? Speaking at the group's national conference, Joseph Ra in another article said, I believe he's a shill and they're using him. All right, we're going to go on here with Culture Watch. Bill Muhlenberg in my OI. This is what he has to say about chrism. Sorry, but I am not buying into chrism. Now, chrism, as the name suggests, is a growing movement wherein some Christians are seeking to find common ground with Muslims. I'm going to skip down to that last statement. Whenever you hear that sort of talk, you should run for the hills. And here's something else. A new religion or same old apostasy. Uh, evangelical leaders promoting such gatherings include Robert H. Schuller and Rick Warren. Schuller was a speaker for the Common Word Conference while Warren spoke at an Islamic event in Washington, D.C. last year. Wherever Chrislam or its equivalent are promoted, Christians should run for their spiritual lives. And you know, all of these are very, very important. Now, Jack, I know that you would like to read this. And that is the gentleman that we uh, talked about a moment ago, the Mahdi, he speaks about. And this is Look what he has to say. Look at that picture, ladies and gentlemen. He is the founder and leading member of the Islamic Sovereign Society of America. And he says, Mahdi will govern the peoples and establish Islam on earth, and Islam will be victorious over all all the religions you guys in the 26 states june 26 should get right with god all right now you know i've often said this is anybody can have an opinion okay but what we rely on and what you should rely on is god's word and i'm going to ask jack a very very hard question but i know he can come up with it the main chapter in the bible that deals with a world religion and a world government. Is there such a chapter in the Bible there, Jack? I started earlier with it, Rex Heller. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 is the coming of Antichrist, and verse 11 is the false prophet. And he leads people to worship the Antichrist so much so that Revelation 13, 8 says, all the world worshiped him. And this Antichrist believes he is God. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, who poseth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God saying, I am God. And remember, as I showed you from the two legs earlier in the program, the Islamic group will be part of the New World Order as well as the European and other nations, every nation under earth except Israel because they're not even counted by Islam today. Oh, you know what? I can't help but think about all these leaders and, and church leaders and politicians, and they're going to make this work. How can the world, can they make it work, Jack, all these churches come together? Jesus answered that centuries ago when he said, there shall be false Christ and false prophets in the religious world. And that's Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. God says in Jeremiah 14, 14, the prophets are lying prophets in my name. I have not sent them. And we're again warned by Jesus in Matthew 7, 15, when he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. And Christ goes on to speak about them in Matthew Chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. You see, we're not really false prophets. We've done all that. He said, depart from me, you bunch of sinners. I never knew you. You were never really mine. Don't get shocked. Even Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light. Even so, his ministers can transform themselves into these prophets of righteousness. They're lost. And that's 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15. Oh, you know, Jack, today we've been talking at home about all the things that we share with you. And I get goose pimples sometimes, and I say, oh, Jack, I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime. But it does point to something good, and that is the coming of the Lord. 
and there is some way that you can be ready for the coming of the Lord. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So it can be good if you're ready for the coming of the Lord. And now, friends, whoo, reclaiming and restoring biblical Christianity, we have to go on with this offer because we've had so many, many calls and emails saying thank you, thank you. So take a look at the preview. America's greatest need is the reclaiming and restoring of biblical Christianity. Why? Presently, many ministers are attempting to eliminate the old-time religion. Doctrinal sermons have been replaced by self-esteem, psychobabble nonsense. Worse yet, contemporary services have turned the sanctuary and worship service into a circus sideshow featuring rock bands and oftentimes songs with meaningless lyrics. Let's restore the preaching of God's Word, the old hymns, the Ten Commandments, and God's demands for holy living. Let's turn away from practicing Hollywood's barnyard morals, covering every form of promiscuous sexual behavior. One prominent American minister presents the following rules to ministers for building a mega church and pleasing the ungodly. Don't mention sin. Remodel the sanctuary to look like a nightclub or casino. Remove every cross inside and outside of the building. Don't give invitations to receive Christ. Who are America's and Christianity's false prophets? Why are they so popular and embraced? Order the new video, Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity, and find out. Make the call. There's the 800 number and there's the address. And I will be enclosing this pamphlet and a wonderful cross with your order. Ooh. What was it that TBN would not allow us to say? They would not air this. Thousands have now written and said, we want this video. We want to know why they re objected to what you were preaching about restoring the old time religion. Whoa, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Please don't put it off. We'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. the pamphlet, the cross included with your call. So make the call now. You know, there are so many reasons why we should say no to Chrislam, but I'm only going to ask Jack three. First of all, the Bible repeatedly says that you cannot have syncretism or a combination of two religions. They just don't blend. Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? And Paul said in Romans 16, 17, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ, which you received, and avoid them. He said again in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 18, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial the devil? What part hath he believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with the temple of idols? Wherefore? Come out from among them and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I'll be the Father unto you, saith the Lord God Almighty. Let's obey God. And you preachers who are slipping and apostatizing, God forgive you. Get right with God. A lot of verses there, Jack. Let's go back to the Bible again because it frequently attests to the demonic basis of idolatrous beliefs and non-Christian religions coming together, correct? Oh, Rexella, in Revelation 13, when the Antichrist rises in verse 1 and the false prophet in verses 11 to 18, he speaks like a dragon, connections with demonic powers, and that's Revelation uh, chapter 20, verse 2. Now get this. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Get it? Doctrines of demons, that's the word of God. That's why 1 John 4, 1 says, test the spirits whether they're of God, for many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, Jack, I want to make one thing clear. Somebody asked me about this today. We love people of other religions. We love them, but it doesn't mean that we can come together. Now, do Muslims and Christians worship the same God or even worship the same Jesus? I'm going to add a couple of words there. The same Jesus. Do we worship the same God? Do we worship the same oh, Jesus? Oh, Rexella, the prophet Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. They say, first of all, he admits he's not God. Wait a minute. My Bible says Christ came who is over a God blessed forever, Romans 9, 5. He said he's a fake. He says I didn't go to the cross. He made peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1, 20. 
and they say that when he comes, he'll come back as a Muslim convert. No, when he comes back, he comes back as the King of the Kings and Lord of the Lords, Revelation 19, 16. And Philippians 2, 10 says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, including every Muslim knee, every Hindu knee, and every Buddhist knee. I believe God. Call me a bigot. I'll be a bigot for my Jesus any day. Well, a bigot as far as showing the way of salvation according to the Bible, Jesus is the only way. And you know, friends, you can be ready for his return. He said, if I go away, I will come again. We keep emphasizing that. Are you ready? Will you open your heart to him and receive him as your Savior? Jack, will you give us the invitation? Oh, precious Jesus. How oh, he's maligned. And yet, so many of you believe he's the true one. The second member of the Trinity. Leaving heaven to take a body to die for you, to take every sin you've ever committed. Put your sins on him now, Jesus. I trust in your shed blood to cleanse me from every sin. Every sin. I lay those sins on you now, Jesus. Wash me. Save me. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you absolutely opened your heart to the Lord. And if you did, if you prayed that prayer with Jack, please write to me. I'll send just a little booklet. First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. We'll be so grateful to contact you and send this to you. God bless you as you walk with the Lord. Here's our announcer now to tell you how I can receive this wonderful offer of the week. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your copy of Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. This is a must-see video. Call today. Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and please, I want to emphasize once again, the time is limited. We've extended it because of so many emails and letters saying, whoa, have we learned a lot, and we'd like to know more. So there's the number, make the call, and there's the address. We want to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. This wonderful, wonderful pamphlet will be with it, plus the cross, with your order. So don't put it up. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. There are so many questions. So many people have said, reclaiming and restoring Christianity. No, reclaiming and restoring biblical Christianity. There's so much to that. We need to bring the church back to the Bible, right? So make the call. And now, friends, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. Opening your Bible can be a real eye-opener. How very true. Jack has opened our eyes with so much today. I want to say once again what a joy it is to come into your home. Please remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. And we cared about one of our video engineers that has gone home to be with the Lord. We want to pay a tribute to him in just a moment. Bye-bye.